السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Our topic today, the Sunnah, what is it and why it's important, is indeed a very, very important topic because the Sunnah is often times misunderstood by Muslims, let alone non Muslims, by Muslims themselves. And we find that one of the attempts to slow Islam down, or to defeat Islam, if I can use that term, is to separate the Sunnah from the Quran, or to separate Muslims from the Sunnah. So, we are hoping today that our discussion will help us to gain a better understanding of what is the Sunnah, how important it is to us, and Hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah wills, increase in all of us an appreciation, a greater appreciation for this aspect of our deen. For indeed, the Prophet ﷺ has said, I leave with you two things that if you hold on to them, you will never go astray. And of course, we know them to be the Quran, the book of Allah ta'ala, and his sunnah. His sunnah. The word sunnah actually has been defined to mean a way of doing something or a tradition. And in fact, every culture, every people has, uh, has a sunnah. But when we talk about the sunnah in Islam, we're talking about the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His, his statements, his actions, his silent approvals, or his expression of disapproval. And all of this encompasses the sunnah in, in Islam. Now, for clarification, point of clarification, we have to know that the term sunnah has different connotations depending upon which angle you may be looking at it from. We just generally speak or identified from two, two standpoints or two viewpoints. And one is that we, when we talk about sunnah in general, we're talking about everything that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, everything that he did, everything that he said, his, his character, he, he, the way he carried himself, the way he walked, the way he dressed, those things that he disapproved of, those things that he approved of. But also, the term sunnah has come to refer to certain acts, certain actions of, of worship that are recommended to be done. So we have to make a distinction between the sunnah as it uh, relates to us from a general standpoint and the sunnah from a specific angle. Because sometimes people will say, well it's just the sunnah as an excuse not to do something. So we want to clarify that when we talk about the sunnah from the general standpoint, we're talking about that aspect of our deen that, that is part and parcel to the revelation that Almighty Allah SWT sent down to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because we know that the Quran is the primary source of, of revelation, but also the sunnah is a primary source of revelation, and both have been preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, إِنَّ نَحْنَ نَزَلْنَا نَزَلْنَا ذِكْرَ وَإِنَّ لَحُوْ لَحَافِذِينَ لَحَافِذُونَ رَعْبِينَ That verily, it is we who have set down the Quran, indeed, we will be its guardians, we will be its protectors, its preservers. So the Qur'an and the Sunnah comprise that foundation for our being for the total way of life of the Muslim that we as Muslims are obligated to, to, to follow, to support, to implement in our lives. And if we at any time 
try to separate or attempt to uh, live a life as a Muslim without following the Sunnah, but only following the Quran, we'll find ourselves falling short. Because the Quran, alhamdulillah, while it is the revealed word of Almighty God Allah, and it is that which we recite in our salah, the sunnah or the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu his example, his explanations, his actions, this is what explains the Quran. Because in the Quran we are told how to make salah, or we are probably we're told about salah, we are told to make salah, to fast in Ramadan, to give the cat to make hajj, but we're not told how to do it. So if I don't take from the sunnah, if I leave the sunnah aside, then I won't be able to know how it is that I'm supposed to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I don't take from the sunnah, I won't know how to fast or the categories of, of zakat or, or the percentage of zakat and how I'm supposed to pay the zakat. I won't know how to perform hajj because the Prophet he said to, to uh, make hajj as we saw him make the hajj. To pray as we saw him make, make the prayer. And although we did not see him, it has been left with the companions of Alhamdulillah to pass it down to the later generations. So it's very, very important for us to know that it is an obligation upon us not only to just follow the Quran, but we must follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are those who are called a uh, Quran Yun, people who just take from the Quran. They don't follow the Sunnah. They think that because the, the Quran is the revelation of Allah, this is all they have to take from. But this is not correct. Because again, the Prophet Allah said he left two things. Not just the Quran, but he left his Sunnah. And whoever holds on to that, alhamdulillah, will be guaranteed success, inshallah ta'ala, in this life and in the earth. The sunnah can be divided in or divided into three parts. Number one, that sunnah which confirms what is in the Quran. Number two, the explanatory sunnah, the part of the sunnah that explains the Quran and the various uh, hukum or sharia injunctions that have been sent down. And then there's sunnah that brings new revelation or new, uh, part of new legislation. And we have to understand that while all of the Quran brings the, the, the legislation from the Sharia, there's still some uh, aspects of the Sharia that come directly from the Sunnah, or from the Sunnah and not from the Quran. For example, we have uh, the, the, the matter regarding the stoning of, of those who commit zina or commit adultery. You don't find this in the Quran, but it is in the Sunnah. And so it, it's an obligation for us to, to follow it. Alhamdulillah. There are many verses in the Quran that verify the, the necessity, the obligation to follow the tradition, the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If I may share some from, from Allah's book, where Allah says in the fifth surah, surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah 92, what means in English, obey Allah and obey the messenger. And beware of evil, and if you turn back, know that it is our messenger's duty to proclaim the message in the clearest manner. Alhamdulillah, wa ati'u wa rasul. This is a commandment that is given throughout the Quran. Not only to obey Allah, but to obey the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to obey the sunnah of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, the Prophet, alayhi wa sallam, has said that in following the sunnah, there was an example of of three men that came to the companion, came to the wife of the prophet, and they asked him, they asked her, pardon me, uh, tell us about Rasulullah, about his prayer, about his, his fasting. And each one of them, because they felt that they couldn't measure up to the standard of Rasulullah, so some one said that he was going to pray all night and never sleep. Then there was a second that said that he was going to fast all the time and never break his fast. And the third said that he was going to uh, remain celibate and never marry because they felt that this was going to raise their status as Muslims, as followers of the Prophet And when the Prophet heard of this, he went to the member and he announced, we are those people who, who said such and such. And he informed them, he informed the Jama'ah 
that he prays some nights and he sleeps some nights. He fasts some days and he breaks his fast some days and he marries women and whoever does not do those things are not from him. So those three persons who attempted to try to excel or to exceed in the, the, the Ibadah of the Prophet of the and of the Sunnah of the Prophet, they, they were corrected that they were not to go beyond try to exceed uh, what he has demonstrated. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah says in the Quran, in the fourth surah, surah in the Sa'a, ayah 80, he who obeys the messenger or obeys Allah. He who obeys Allah's messenger is obeying Allah. Now, the sunnah, alhamdulillah, is something that we have to have a great appreciation for. As Allah says in the Quran, Say, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah commanded the Prophet ﷺ to tell us, to tell the people, that if you really love God, follow His Prophet, the one who He has sent to us. And so this is very, very important, because loving Allah Taala is contingent upon our obedience and following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in another hadith, we know on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, may Allah repeated them, that the Prophet alayhi wa sallam said that none of us truly believe until we love him, until we love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than we love our fathers, more than we love our sons, and need more than we love anything or anyone in, 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 in uh, mankind or even our wealth. So this tells us that it is absolutely incumbent upon us to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to be lovers of the Sunnah, defenders of the Sunnah. In fact, it is one of the rights of the Prophet Muhammad, God's peace and blessings be upon him, that we learn his Sunnah. And then we try to implement it to the best of our ability. If we, if we ne uh, neglect that in, in our growth and development as Muslims, if we don't make an effort to learn his way to learn his his uh, his practices, then we are really uh, doing our own selves an injustice. We are pressing ourselves because his example, Alhamdulillah, is the best example for human beings to follow. As Allah has said in the Quran, that in the Messenger of Allah, that verily in the Messenger of Allah, you have the most excellent model for him whose hope is in meeting Allah in the last day and who remember Allah much. And today we know that there's a lot of emphasis put on role models and mentors, mentorship. Uh, we find our youth uh, looking for examples, looking for role models to follow after. And oftentimes when we visit various masajid and we, we speak with the youth, we ask them about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu we ask them to tell us something about him, we ask them to tell us about the companions, and we find them not being able to do that. Why? Because we're not putting the emphasis on learning about our beloved Nabi Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or his noble companions, may Allah be pleased with them. We have to, to know that it is the sunnah, alhamdulillah, that actually has been preserved and passed down that helps to, to, to preserve the unity of this deen. We are in a time now where we're seeing much uh, differing of opinions, much ikhtilaf. And the Prophet sallallahu he even foretold that there will come a time when there will be, you will see much differing amongst the ummah. Why is that? Because we find Muslims getting away from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so if we, if we get to if we get back to the sunnah, then we'll find that this will be a means that will unify us, that can bring us together in the true spirit of unity. Because Allah SWT does not want us to be divided. He says, La tafaraku, do not be divided among yourselves. But when we move away from the sunnah, when we choose to follow our own desires, or our own opinions, as opposed to following the clear dictates of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that have been preserved for us, in the authentic hadith, then we find we'll be at odds with one another. We find difference of opinion. We'll find, you see, splitting 
amongst the Ummah. And this, this is a great uh, tragedy that we as Muslims are faced with today. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our affairs and heal our hearts and put in our hearts a greater love for the Quran, the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to know that it is, it is impossible for us to be Muslim and just rely on the Qur'an. We cannot be among those who are Qur'an who just take the Qur'an without taking from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because if you do that, then you are really disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're disobeying Allah and you're following your own desire. Following the Sunnah of Rasulullah is absolutely essential and in this day and time when Islam is under attack, when the Sharia is under attack, when Muslims, you see, are held in high suspicion, we have to know that holding on to that is going to be our, our safeguard, is going to be our cause of victory. But if we let go of, of those two sources, then for sure, we will see that the Ummah of Muhammad Islam, will, will always be down, will always be defeated. And this is the condition that we find out our Ummah in today. We find people questioning various aspects of the Sunnah from amongst the Muslims. But the Prophet Muhammad has said that we are to follow as much of it as we can, as much of, of the Sunnah as is easy for us. You see, so Alhamdulillah, there are blessings when we try to implement the ways of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It doesn't mean that just practicing the, the, the outer appearance of the Prophet, dressing like he did, or wearing the lehya, or you see, or wearing the, the, the pants above the ankle. This is not just the aspect of the sunnah that we need to be focusing on. We need to be focusing on all of the aspects of the Prophet's sunnah, both the, the outer aspect as well as the inner aspect that helped to form the character because he has been sent to perfect the character, to perfect the human character. And this is what is really needed in society today. The society needs to get to know who the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was. And the only way they will know him is by seeing us demonstrate and implement his way in our own lives. Alhamdulillah alameen. So, brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we can't stress enough the importance of learning as much about the Prophet Sunnah as, as we can, because again, we talked yesterday about the, the foundation of the Sharia. The Sharia also takes from the, the Sunnah. And if you have people who are attacking the Sharia, what they're really doing is they're attacking the Prophet Sunnah, they're attacking Islam, and what are we going to do about it? You see, we are in a society that uh, Believe it or not, it has given us the free opportunity to practice this deen to the extent that, that perhaps even better than we practice it in, in Muslim countries. We have no excuse not to learn this deen and apply it in the best manner. You see, a lot of the Muslims throughout the world, they're waiting for the Muslims in America to wake up and to, to demonstrate, you see, the, 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 the real uh, authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but we, we find a problem that comes about when, when we acquire knowledge of this thing, that we begin to become even more divided. We, 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 we get a little bit of knowledge and then we, we start to put ourselves up on pedestals, you see, and, and, and so now we have even more cause for division. This is a big problem uh, amongst the, 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 the students of knowledge today uh, because we have to remember that the, the seeking of the knowledge is, is not for our own personal gratification or our own, you see, elevation. It's for the purpose of bringing us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, it enabling us to practice this deen more. As long as we remember that seeking the knowledge is an act of worship, and rather that implementing the sunnah is a form of worship, alhamdulillah, then it will help us to keep our intentions pure. But if we just do this for the sake of showing off, and we do, we, we seek a, a, the knowledge of this deen, and we seek the implementation of the Prophet Sunnah for the, for the purpose of, of exalting our own selves, then this is not going to help solve the problems that we as Muslims are faced with here in the West. 
We have a great responsibility to to learn the sunnah, to establish it, to pass it on to our, our younger generations. This is a great, great responsibility that each and every one of us are obligated to, to carry out. And if we don't do this, then Allah is going to hold us accountable. Allah is going to hold us accountable. And how will it be when, when we're asked on the, uh, in, in our grave, in our mafbir, who was our Ra, who was our Prophet, Sallallahu and what was our deen? Answering those questions when we are asked in the grave is not going to be so easy as one may think if we don't practice those things in this life. If we don't appreciate the Quran, the Book of Allah, if we have not become a companion to the Book of Allah SWT in this life, we won't be able to answer that question correctly if we have not committed it to memory, recited it in our salah, understood its meaning and, and taught it to others. If we have not studied the life of the Prophet Muhammad SAW, learned and benefited from his sunnah, implemented his sunnah, we're not going to be able to answer that question of, as to who is our Prophet because that is the proof, you see, uh, for our sincerity. By learning these things and putting them into practice and telling others about them. Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah ta'ala, let us guard against minimizing the importance of the sunnah in our lives because when we do that, we give the enemies of Islam the, the, the opportunity to continue to, to attack and to belittle this team. You see, we have to be proud of what the Prophet وسلم, has left us with. A complete and total way of life that regulates every aspect of our lives. You see, alhamdulillah, I mean, really, there's no system of life that is as thorough and as, as complete and beneficial as the way that has been given to us by the final Prophet وسلم, who was sent to us to be obeyed. Allah has only sent the Prophets and Messengers for us to obey them. And so now that Muhammad has come, and there will be no other Prophets after him, no other Messengers after him, we are obligated to follow him and to, to learn his Sunnah and to put it into practice to the best of our ability, inshaAllah ta'ala. One thing that we need to, to, to learn in, in studying the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that it's a voluminous, totally, it's so much information to learn from the Sunnah, from studying the authentic hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, that we're not going to be able to learn it all. But the best thing that we can do is to try to learn a little bit at a time, study as much as you can on a daily basis, make it a daily practice to have some of the, 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 the wonderful uh, translations or uh, written the text of the uh, prophetic hadith of, of, of the Prophet Muhammad in our library and make it a daily practice to read from it, whether it be from Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, or Riyadh al all these things are, are now becoming more and more available. We don't have any excuse not to be able to take from the sunnah and learn it and put it into practice on a daily basis. All of us generally have access to the internet, and while we have to be careful with what we uh, research using the internet, we have to be careful uh, from the various sources because there are websites that are, are designed or are putting out the false information, but there are those uh, websites that will give you uh, accurate and authentic information that, that can uh, benefit you. And so it's not even required that you even buy some of the books uh, that, that will benefit you because they're now online, you can download them to your, your desktop and, and keep them right there, alhamdulillah. So we really have no excuse. But we have to look at our own selves and, and ask ourselves, are we making the best effort that we can to really learn uh, the, the prophetic sunnah of, of our Prophet Sallallahu and implement it to the best of our ability. And remember that the Prophet Sallallahu said that the most beloved deed to Allah Subh'ala are those that are done regularly, even though it is a little. So, alhamdulillah, when we first came here tonight, uh, we saw the crowd was kind of scattered out and the brother asked that everybody kind of come closer. This is from the sunnah that we come together, that we, we not separate from amongst ourselves when we're in gatherings like this. <clears throat> when we look at those things in our daily lives that we should implement, uh, 
one of the first things that we need to make sure that we're doing is, is making sure that we're keeping up the fire of the Ali Salah and doing the, the supererogatory acts of worship. Those acts of worship that are actually going to earn us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those acts that are beyond, above and beyond the obligatory, the call to do. We know we have to do five daily obligatory salah. But what about the sunnah? What about the nawafil acts of worship? These are the acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the uh, sacred hadith, uh, where the Prophet of Allah has told us that Allah said that we come nearer to Allah by the performance of the nawafil acts. These acts of worship are the supererogatory acts, the extra acts of worship that will bring us nearer to Allah and gain us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we're not doing, the, for example, the sunnah prayers now, then we should at least start by implementing at least one sunnah prayer at a time and then add to it as we go throughout the course of a day or the course of, of a week or a month. So that by the end of the, the month or end of the year, you've actually made it a habit to make the sunnah salah. Some of us don't make the witter salah before the fast. We should make that a habit to implement that because there's great benefit in praying the odd number of rakah. Also, Salat al tahajjud getting up in the, in the, in the night, in the, in the wee hours of the morning, while most of the people are sleeping. This is when Allah subhanahu wa comes down from his throne to the lower heavens to see which of his slaves are seeking his forgiveness. So there are many, many aspects of the sunnah that we need to apprise ourselves of and try to implement it to the best of our ability, inshallah. Because it is with this sunnah, alhamdulillah, that we will gain the love of Allah ta'ala and Inshallah Ta'ala will increase in us the love of His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no other path, no other way that will bring us the success not only in this life but the success in the Akhirah like the, the way of the Prophet Muhammad, God's peace and blessings upon him. As for those who reject following the Sunnah, the best thing that you can do, I'm talking about from amongst the Muslims, the best thing that we can do is to give them nasiha, to give them advice, advise them of its importance, and make dua for them. But let us not let this be a, a source of, of, of argumentation or, or fighting amongst ourselves when we come with different aspects of the sun that maybe one person is aware of and you're not aware of, or vice versa, you are, you're aware of a particular uh, sunnah act of the Prophet and they're not aware of it and so now this becomes a point of contention, a point of argument. No, we, we have to do as uh, our great predecessors have done before and that is to humble ourselves to one another. And it may be that you're right and they're wrong, or it may be that they're right and you're wrong. We have to be willing to, you see, put ourselves down, lower our own uh, uh, expectations of ourselves and not always have to be right about the matter. But if, if, if you can uh, show that you have the evidence for a certain uh, sunnah, a certain sunnah act of the Prophet, alhamdulillah, then this is good. If you, if you don't have the evidence, and they have the evidence, then, then take from it. The great scholars, the, the, the imams, the four imams, often would, would say, if, if, there, if you find something that is from the sunnah that disagrees with what they say, then you leave what they have said, what the great imams, the imam uh, Hamdi, Imam Ahmed, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, they, Masha'Allah Ta'ala, were the, four of the greatest Imams of our own. Certainly not greater than the companions of the Prophet, the Lady Sets Ham, but those are the ones who have been given the greatest distinction as far as establishing or having a following a certain school of thought. But if even what they say differs with, the clear text of the Quran or the clear text of the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, then we shouldn't allow ourselves to become so rigidly entrenched in one particular school of thought that we, that we you see, cannot uh, accept a, a different viewpoint or accept the change to that which is, is directly from the prophetic sunnah. Alhamdulillah. So with that, inshallah ta'ala, I hope that uh, we will all take opportunity to increase our study of the life of the Prophet, God's peace and blessing be upon him. We have the obligation to tell the people, to tell the world about who he was. For no other Prophet do we have the information about 
a prophet or messenger of God like we have for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the time when he is being slandered, when he, may peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, is being maligned in the media throughout the world, we have, have a greater responsibility and obligation to defend his honor, to defend his integrity, to defend his example by telling the people the true story about the Prophet and about the benefit of his, of his life and why we follow him, alhamdulillah. Because it is with following the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah that we will, inshallah ta'ala, be on the path to Jannah. The purpose of following the Sunnah is not just to follow the Sunnah and, and, and that's it. No, the purpose of following the Sunnah is to put us on the path that will take us to the paradise where we will, inshallah ta'ala, be joined with him. And we will be joined with his companions. But if we continue to neglect this part of our being, then we're really, we're really selling ourselves short. We're denying a very important component of this being. It is absolutely essential for us to know that the Sunnah of the Prophet is just as much wahi or revelation from Allah as the Quran. And so we are obligated to take both of them, not just one or the other. Alhamdulillah. I ask Allah's forgiveness for my shortcomings and mistakes, and I pray that Allah will increase us all in understanding the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and that he will increase in us the love for this deen. And give us a good end. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah.